Hey, this is John Johnson of Capture Productions, Inc. You can find me at johnjohnson101.com. Today's topic is about Final Cut Pro versus Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm here with Mr. Lloyd Halsell. He's a great friend and a great engineer. Um, I've been knowing him for years, and he just has an, a passion for technology, especially with pr um, production, post-production, and just putting his creative juices to work to give clients the best project possible. So, you've been using Final Cut Pro 7 for how many years? Oh, at least for about 8 years now. 8 years? Uh, yes. And what do you like about that, that um, program? Uh, I like the interface, the workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, at that particular time when it was introduced, it came as a suite. Okay. Uh, such as uh, software for authoring DVDs, DVD mm -hmm. Studio Pro, mm -hmm. Soundtrack Pro for some, a lot of you music fans out there who like to work with audio and audio files. Also, it also came with a great program for doing titling called uh, Live Type. Oh, yeah. Live Type is still one of my favorites. <laughs> and then there is their, their answer to doing 3D compositing, which is Motion. Mm -hmm. And motion is still made. It's still a great program. So yes. it has uh, a lot of great uh, points about Final Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. So I've also used and studied Final Cut Pro. I'm a master pro, which means I've studied the applications in the suite and I took the different tests to actually give me the certification. So it doesn't mean that I'm a better editor, but it, it means that I can get the job done in an efficient way. And editing is an art, so each person has their art form which will give you the particular look or the pacing of a show or whatever you're editing, okay? Um, I use Final Cut and I really love the program. Um, I think I started off in Adobe Premiere Pro and um, once I got into Apple, um, I learned about Avid and all of these things at school. So when I graduated from um, college, I had to find a way to continue editing and try to get an application that would actually be efficient. So like I said, I was in Final um, Adobe Premiere Pro, and then it actually, they stopped producing it for Mac. I don't know what time that was, but so I, I actually had to pick up and go with Final Cut 7 or whatever version was. Same at thing the time. happened to me because I was deeply embedded into Premiere mm -hmm. using another additional hardware called, at that time, Media 100. Okay. And at uh, that time, um, a premiere, a premiere six is what it was. Okay. Yeah, six point five. <laughs> six point five. <laughs> six point five, and then all of a sudden they pulled Adobe pulled the the uh, Apple would not support uh, the on the Adobe side because yes. they were coming out with Final Cut Pro. And boy, mm -hmm. you talking about somebody who was frustrated. I was actually really frustrated because I was just getting the hang of that program. Um, I knew about Final Cut and I knew about Avid, but it was a program that was available to me at the time and I just took it on and it was working for me and so the fear factor came in with learning another application no one really wants to migrate over after you right. it's like you move into a house you you've been living there for years yes. and now you gotta move into right. a new community <laughs> and move all your junk and that's the, the hardest thing moving all your stuff packing it up and then going up and down the stairs if you live in an apartment building so it's just a lot of things to consider and that's why a lot of people stay stuck in uh, a legacy software so um, so you're still using Final Cut 7 now well, yeah, I'm using Final Cut Pro. Unfortunately, I'm not in the classroom anymore. If I was, I'd probably be on top of things. I'm mm -hmm. focusing more on my music and compositional skills. Okay. Uh, I did find out, uh, to my surprise, that now that I have my DSLR, my T4i, nice. that um, uh, Final Cut Pro was not really optimized to be used with 7, although there are some workarounds. Mm -hmm. And I, do, I discovered that when using the multicam feature. Mm -hmm. Uh, so therefore, some sometimes I'll be going later on in the future to uh, either Premiere, which I learned on, or either depending on my applications over the Final Cut Pro 10. Okay. So before we get into like um, the difference in the different um, programs, why do you think Apple stopped supporting Final Cut 7, or it just wasn't supported anymore? 
Well, at that time, uh, when I went to the classroom over or high school, we were doing what they call tape-based editing. Mm -hmm. From one machine to another, you're talking about some Flintstone stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got the yeah. tape, you got the, the player, then you got the recorder, then you're doing your time code, and you punch in and punch out. Wasn't the greatest thing, but at least you learned the concept. Mm -hmm. But around, if I can remember, around 98, 99 mm -hmm. is when Apple introduced what they call Final Cut Pro, maybe three or four their first version of that software. Mm -hmm. I guess they told the, the think tank people over at Adobe, sorry, we're not going to give you the codes anymore, therefore we want our own market share. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, to, 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 to know, the, it, I had no other alternative okay. because I didn't want to fall too far behind. Okay. And so, uh, we live in a rapidly changing society and sometimes you just have to make the adjustment. You have to make the adjustments. You know, it can be very painful, but uh, I guess you never get too old to learn something new. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the question was, why did Apple stop making Final Cut 7? Do you have any ideas? Yes, I have an idea. I, I, because all of their, you know, <coughs> Apple, not only do they make a great software, they also make hardware. Mm -hmm. and lots of laptops, they're, they're known. Steve Jobs has done a great job when it comes to uh, building computers all the way from the 80s up until this point. But a lot of the uh, processors, especially when you got involved in the Intel machines, they optimize those machines to run a 24-bit technology. Mm -hmm. Faster processing, faster rendering, so therefore Apple wanted to take advantage of that, and they had to rewrite the code mm -hmm. and break it down so that it would be a more efficient, more productive piece of software. That's mm -hmm. what I assumed. Okay, so instead of going to um, Final Cut, Eight, they just went to Final Cut Ten. Yeah, that's a missing link there. What, <laughs> what, do you think we went to sleep for a second? Or something happened. Maybe. Um, that's a good question. Was somebody have to do some investigation? Do you have any idea? Well, I think now looking at um, it's like the Star Wars. They started Episode Four. Yeah. And they came back, you know, and started doing all before all the all before episodes, early episodes. Well, anyway. Well, I think Apple really likes to be on top and um, get attention. So. And they actually went, in my belief, they went to where the, the buyers are at. So it's more consumer-based editors versus professional editors. So it's a bigger marketplace to be um, a longer profit for their shareholders. So I think that they went in that direction and kind of like disregarded the professional editor. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you can't do professional editing in um, Final Cut 10. You can. But... For me, it's like it takes away the art of editing because it actually shows you a lot. It's like shooting in automatic. You know how the light changes when you go from room to room, the white balance changes. So Final Cut 10 kind of does that for me. And I, I, I really like the art of editing and putting the composition together. So I don't want things to be done for me. I want to create True. the content on my own. So um, that's why I just dove right into... Uh, um, Adobe Premiere Pro, which actually gave me all the functionality of Final Cut 7 plus way more, and um, it's 64 bit, you know, it can take advantage of all the RAM that you have. That's in correct, the 64 bit, I meant to say that. And it also uh, will allow you to use your GPU, so mm -hmm. meaning that the rendering will be done with the graphics card, which is a great feature which um, Final Cut 7 really didn't support. Because it was a 32-bit system, and I'm not going to get into all the technicalities because I don't know. Every, I'm not an engineer like that, but I know um, that when you have a program that can move with the different um, qualities of footage, you got um, 2K. Sorry about that. 4K, mm -hmm. 8K. So you're going to need a more um, flexible machine that can handle that. And a great feature that I like about Adobe Premiere Pro, it handles any codec that's out there and it's always upgrading to, and it listens to the community of editors. It's, it's changing and evolving to be a more efficient program. So it's like you can edit in any codec natively without rendering, which is a great thing, you know? Mm, it's a great thing. That's a great time to. My only other concern with Final Cut Pro 10 too is why was the interface changed in the look? Well, I think, um, I don't really have the answer, but it just reminds me of, um... I movie on steroids. I, I movie on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> so it's a great program, don't get me wrong, but um, coming from a professional realm of editing mm -hmm. in a traditional NLE, I just it was just more natural for me to go with Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. So I did my research. I was looking at Avid because, you know, that was an industry standard and I really like Avid, but it it just wasn't for me, you know, it wasn't my baby, so to say. So I wanted something that I was used to. I didn't want to have to learn a lot of new different things. I mean, different things. But what I wanted to do is to take my traditional, um, my t my traditional programs that I usually use, like Photoshop, Illustrator, and um, work in an environment that's native to everything. So that's mm -hmm. why I chose Adobe Premiere Pro. Is Avid still one of the, the leaders in nonlinear when it comes to uh, the professional world, would you say? In I believe so, but you know, Autodesk has Autodesk Smoke, which is a great program, but I, you know, I was reading some of the forums and they say that Autodesk doesn't really um, support the technology for Autodesk Smoke. I'm not talking about Maya or anything like that because that's not my field, but as far as like um, what I like about Autodesk Smoke, and this is just a little sidebar, is that everything is, is right there. It's like you don't have to round trip, you know, like in Adobe Premiere Pro, you got to go out, come back in, dynamic linking, mm -hmm. and then um, in Final Cut Studio, you have to do the round tripping stuff, you know, going from one program to the next one, coming back. But in Adobe, um, in Autodesk Smoke, everything is there you can do color grading you can do effects you can do 3d and it's a no based system but we can save that for another video my question though is is uh, we know that avid has been around for years are they still being widely used when it comes to the broadcast industry yeah um i read a little article and it was saying that um i i, I really don't want to say this because i'm not for sure yes. but i think that it's not as um, prevalent now? Prevalent as some of these other applications, but mm -hmm. with Adobe, more and more people are using that, and more and more production houses like um, the Associated Press is adopting this particular mm -hmm. software to use in their arsenal, and um, I just want to be in a place where I have the support that I need. If I'm calling, I have a question, mm -hmm. I can just look up the form, or I can call and get that help that I need instead of like... Um, do, do, do. <laughs> that number you have called. I need support when I need right. it, you know. So, and I find right. that at um, Adobe. Just right. So, um, what about um, what do you like about Final Cut Seven that you're scared to leave? Like, why don't you really want to go to another application? Primarily because uh, Johnson, because of the way the interface is has been designed for the last several years. It mimicked fine, uh, Premiere when I switched over in terms of the layout. Um, I know. I guess we've just become emotionally attached to something. The workflow, we know what to expect, the behavior, uh, what the limitations are. Uh, not only that, all the plugins that I've invested into the system that plays a big, a big, a big point, which uh -huh. can cost you lots of money. Yeah. So that's one of my concerns, but eventually I will make the chance. Uh, for the record, I did start learning on Premiere when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Great program. Well, I had that same feeling. I was pretty much scared of migrating over, but I actually did it, you know, and I forced myself to do it because I, I knew that um, eventually Final Cut 7 will be phased out, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not getting any support, so I didn't want to keep working in the Stone Ages. And I really love Final Cut, and I believe that Final Cut back, Final Cut Seven was so advanced that the applications today are just now catching up with it. But now Adobe Premiere Pro has surpassed it, you know, okay. because it's pretty much the same person that wrote Adobe Premiere, um, Final Cut Seven, and Final Cut Ten. So it's the same person. I, I forget his name, but. Um, we're leaving out one other software company. We got to give what? them some credit. What? What? Sony Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about Vegas, but there's yeah. some PC people who swear by it, okay? Well, I don't know about Sony <laughs> Vegas, so you have to do a, um, a Google search <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's another subject, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, 
Um, but I really think that anyone that's been editing in Adobe um, in a Final Cut 7 should move over to Adobe Premiere Pro because it's supported. It's pretty much the same architecture, but it's advanced because it's written pretty much by the, the same person and a group of other supporting people because that's a big application to try to produce by yourself. But um, what I'm saying is that um, you can import the keyboard shortcut, so it would actually be like you're using... Final Cut 8 or Final Cut 10 is is the same thing, but it's better. So um, you just got to get that out of your mindset. And once you get, um, once you start using it for a couple of months, um, you will actually look at Final Cut 7 and like, why am I, why was I using it? It'll look old and antiquated to you. So like you opened up Final Cut today, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so do we still have time uh, to do what? On the card. It's been oh. going on the time. <laughs> Well, there you have it, guys. This is John Johnson of Capture Productions, Inc. You can find me at johnjohnson101.com. Stay tuned for more great videos. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. <laughs> I was wondering if the camera's still going. I don't know, man. Is it still going? It was still going. Oh, cool.